In this screencast video lecture, we are going to see the points related to anaerobic respiration. As you all know, there is two types of respirations have been present. One is aerobic and another one is anaerobic respiration. In the process of metabolism, it starts with the glycolysis pathway in which glucose is finally converted to pyruvic acid. From there, acetyl-CoA, then acetyl-CoA will be degraded there by using the citric acid cycle or Krebs cycle. Finally, through both this process, you are getting a lot of reducing E. coli, that is NADH or FADH2. So, these are all the reduced E. coli that have been formed in a large amount. These reduced E. coli are further channeled there into the electron transport chain. If you look at here, you can able to see the reducing E. coli are getting shared there into the electron transport chain. There, it is getting oxidized and with the help of a proton motive force, ATP could be synthesized there. Here, the final or terminal electron acceptor there in the aerobic respiration is oxygen. Whereas, when the question is of anaerobic respiration, it will be oxidized form of inorganic compounds such as a nitrate or sulfate. Say for example, nitrate accepts the electron and it forms into nitrogen gas finally and it escapes into the atmosphere. Sulfate can able to accept the electron there in the electron transport chain operation and it forms into hydrogen sulfide. So, these are all the alternate electron acceptors that could be present there in the environment and it favors the growth of organism under an anaerobic condition in which oxygen is lacking. Now, we look at the explanation for the anaerobic respiration. It is a form of respiration in which ATP is produced without the presence of oxygen. This respiration is also effected through electron transport chain but with certain other proteins or enzymes are involved here in the anaerobic respiration. Here instead of using oxygen as a terminal electron acceptor, oxidized form of inorganic compounds such as sulphate, nitrate are used as an electron acceptor. These molecules will be generally having a lower reduction potential compared to that of the oxygen. Thus the amount of ATP produced per molecule of glucose oxidized will also be lesser. Both inorganic and organic compounds can able to serve as a terminal electron acceptors in the anaerobic respiration. Inorganic compounds here refers to sulphate, nitrate and even ferric ion can able to accept the electron and it will be converted to ferrous. Organic compounds can also serve as a electron acceptors there in an anaerobic respiration. The compounds includes dimethyl sulfoxide and fumarate that acts as a terminal electron acceptor. Now we look at the salient features of the anaerobic respiration. In anaerobic respiration, the terminal electron acceptor that is the electron transport chain is usually made up of sulphate and nitrate and it won't be of an oxygen. Some archaea such as methanogens can able to use carbon dioxide as an electron acceptor at, that results in the production of methane as a byproduct. Similarly, a group of purple sulfur bacteria called chromatium and chlorobium uses Sulfate as an electron acceptor producing hydrogen sulfide as a byproduct. This organism resides in a low oxygen containing environment and thus they need to opt for a anaerobic pathways to break down the substrate that are available in that environment. Anaerobic respiration is similar to aerobic respiration in that molecules enter the electron transport chain passes the electron to the final electron acceptor that is here the molecules refers to the FADH2 and NADH2 that enters electron transport chain and it passes its electron finally to the nitrate or sulphate. As I already discussed, compared to the aerobic respiration, in anaerobic respiration, the amount of energy produced is little bit less. Say for example, it will be only of a 34 molecules of ATP. Whereas if it is of a aerobic respiration, it could be somewhere around 36 molecules of ATP. Anaerobic respiration, however, plays a pivotal role there in the biogeochemical cycling of carbon, nitrogen and sulfur. The nitrate that acts as electron acceptor under anaerobic condition produces nitrogen gas as a byproduct. As a result, the nitrogen will be recycled there in the nitrogen cycle. And finally, it will be reaching the atmosphere as a atmospheric nitrogen. Anaerobic respiration takes place in many environments. This includes freshwater, soil, deep sea surfaces, 
even some microbes that are living in the oxygenated environments will be preferring the anaerobic respiration. This is due to the reason that there will be certain difficulty there in the diffusion of oxygen into the surface of the places in which they are living. Next, we look at the details of various molecules or compounds that are acting as a terminal electron acceptors under anaerobic respiratory condition. Anaerobic cellular respiration is fairly similar to that of the aerobic cellular respiration in which electrons are transferred through an electron transport chain that is generated from the fuel molecule that is from glucose or fumarate. This will be accelerating the ATP synthesis there in the organism under anaerobic condition. Many microorganisms were able to use sulphate and reducing it to hydrogen sulphate at the end of the operation of electron transport chain. Whereas, some organism can able to use nitrate and it will be reducing into nitrate. There are a group of organism which can able to still reduce it to nitrous oxide and finally to nitrogen gas. This kind of organisms are referred as a denitrifying group of bacteria. They play an important role there in the nitrogen cycling. Some living organism will be using organic molecules, say for example dimethyl sulfoxide, fumarate, trimethylamine oxide, these are all used as a final electron acceptor there in the electron transport chain. Here, fumarate could be reduced finally into succinate, trimethylamine oxide is converted into trimethylamine and dimethyl sulfoxide could be reduced there into dimethyl sulfide. In the right hand side, you can able to see the different possible anaerobic respiration that could be occurring there in the natural system. Even there are inorganic final electron acceptors that could be used under anaerobic respiration includes manganic form that is manganese is reduced into manganese, selenate can be reduced into selenite and even further into selenium under certain condition, arsenate may be reduced there into arsenite. So, these are all the other molecules that can be serving as a terminal electron acceptors there in the anaerobic respiration.